people and those watching, Lord, through social media. Father, we just give you the praise now for your word. Your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that which you set it forth to accomplish. And you said in your word that you watch over it to perform it speedily. And Father, we give you praise now. As I attempt to speak forth your word, let none of my words fall to the ground. Let them be anointed, Lord God. And let the people that are hearing have ears to hear and a heart to receive from the Holy Spirit this day. I ask this and I believe it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen, amen and amen. We are continuing today in, on the study, a short study on the life of Joshua. And this uh, title of my message this week is simply, It's All in Your Attitude. Is there anybody here needs to hear that? Yeah. Just me. How many of you need to hear it's all in your attitude? Hey, that's a lot better. Amen. Turn on your Bibles, if you can, this morning to uh, Numbers, the 13th chapter. I'm going to read from verses 17, uh, I believe through 20, uh, in the Amplified Version. Numbers 13. Thank you, Father. Before I begin, here we see the story of Moses. And he's telling the leaders of the tribes to go out and scout the, the land. And this is where we will pick it up. He sent Joshua and Caleb, and they were among these spies. Verse 17. Moses sent them to scout out the land of Canaan and said to them, Get up this way by the south, the Negev, Negev and go up into the hill country. I want you to watch very carefully how precise God is. God is a God of precision. And you'll see this as you hear these words. And see what the land is, whether the people who dwell there are strong or weak. One of the two, strong or weak. What else did he say? Few or many. I'm getting a ringing here. An echo. Thank you. Strong or weak. Few or many. One of the two. Come back and tell me what you see. And whether the land they live in is one good or two bad. Good or bad. And whether the cities they dwell in are camps or strongholds. He wanted to know all the details because God is a God of detail. And what the land is, whether it's fat or lean, whether there is timber on it or not, and be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first fruit of the ripe grapes. When you read this story, and I've studied this for years, I still see so much wonder in it all at how people can have different viewpoints of what they see and what they hear. Everyone can be looking at the same thing and see it a thousand different ways. Are you following what I'm saying? We saw last time that the first part of Joshua's life was, was going to be preparation for leadership. And here in Numbers 13, we see that the beginning of the second part of his life was called moving into obedience. It's so important you hear what I just said. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Joshua's opportunity to demonstrate his commitment to his commander-in-chief, of course, being Moses, came when Moses appointed him along with 11 other men to enter Canaan. He appointed them to go and spy out the land. And when they returned from their mission, it was all in their attitude. And beloved, we can fast forward all these centuries later to 2019. And I can say those words to you today. It's all in our attitude. It truly is. Watch this. 
<clears throat> excuse me. When they returned from their mission, only Joshua and Caleb were positive. They were the only two positive about entering the, uh, Canaan. The others were frightened by what they had seen. They saw the fortified cities. They saw the giant warriors. They instilled the same fear, fear into all of Israel. You see, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And the words of your mouth will be life and death, beloved. And these leaders, the, the people of Israel, were looking to the leaders to lead. And instead of them leading with faith and, and encouragement and trying to help them, they were telling them, we're never going to make it. Never take anyone's hope, beloved. Never. There's always hope. There's always hope. So they feared this, or instilled rather, the same fear into Israel. And the whole nation rose up in rebellion against Moses and his brother Aaron. The whole nation. Boy, I tell you, no wonder Moses at one point said, Lord, just let me destroy them all. <laughs> at this point, at this point in time, Joshua demonstrated incredible maturity. He, along with Caleb, dared to confront the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, and we just read it, the land which we passed through to spy out is an exceeding good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Actually, I didn't read this yet in the scripture. It's coming at another period uh, during this teaching. But only do not rebel against the Lord. Or in other words, don't fail to obey him. That's what they were saying. Do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land for they shall be our prey. Their protection has been removed from them. Wow, that's a mouthful. These people knew. They, 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 the spies that seen the way God saw knew that God was about to take their protection. So if God can take protection, he can give protection. Is that true? We need to see that we're serving the God of, 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 the, of the old covenant just the same as we're serving the God of the new covenant. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's the God over his church that his son Jesus died for. So what am I saying today? Do not fear. Do not fear. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is with them. The Lord is with them. And and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So we see that Moses chose Joshua as one of the spies to be sent from Kadesh to view the land of Canaan. Twelve spies were sent out. And Joshua, the Bible said, had a right spirit with the Lord. He brought back a good report. A right spirit with the Lord means a good report. Because he had seen the Lord in spirit and truth, he brought back for, to them a right report, an honest report. It was not exaggerated. It did not take away from what he had seen. The Lord had promised the children of Israel that they were going into a land of milk and honey. He told them they were going into a land of milk and honey. Just like Jesus said, come, let us go to the other side. It hadn't happened yet. They hadn't seen the enemy's face yet. But God had said, you're going into a land of milk and honey. And Joshua and Caleb believed God's promise, not the giants in the land. They believed what God said. So, beloved, my question to you and I today is this. Can you believe God's promise? Can you believe God's promise in your circumstances? The circumstances that you have found yourself in today. Can you believe his promise of health and the affliction that you have today? Can you believe in his supply and your financial need that you have today? Can you believe his help is in the, in the spiritual need that you may have today? All you have to do is to turn to him 
and say, Lord, I believe your word. And Lord, I need you. I need you right now. Jesus, I need you. I'm going to say something, beloved, I hope you'll never forget. I thank God for this church. I thank God for prayer waters. Oh, I thank God for the Aaron's and the hers. I thank God for people on phones that pray for people. The, the, the Wednesday nights will get sheet after sheet of prayer requests. Thank God for all of these people. But I'm here to tell you today, you better get your eyes off of man and get them on God. Get them or give them a praise because that's the truth. You have to turn to him in your time of need. Thank God you can pick up a phone, and we do need prayer partners. I don't want to minimize that. We need people. There's times in our lives when we have to talk it out, and we need people to talk to. But at the end of the day, beloved, you keep your eyes fixed on the prize. You keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, because he said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. All we have to do is to turn to him and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I thank you for this one. I thank you for that one. But I need you. I need you right now. I need your help right now. And I'm here to tell you, beloved, Jesus won't let you down. He said, I'm here to answer you. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, this world can change. Everything in this world can change, but I do not change. The same yesterday, today, and forever meant thousands of years ago, right fast forward to the year 2019. He doesn't change. Whatever level of faith that you and I may find ourselves on today, do your best to obey God and leave the details to him and never, never allow yourself to be condemned by a fallen, beaten foe. Satan has no power over the church. Only the power we give him, and for the most part, it's the power of suggestion. That's what he uses to us. He suggests the worst of every situation. And I'm not denying facts. What I'm simply saying to you today is God's word is still God's word. And I will believe that till the day I draw my last breath. Whether things work the way I want them to or not. The hidden things belong to God. We sang it this morning. He's in the mystery. We don't know the mysteries. We will not know everything until we get to the other side. We see yet through a a glass dimly. But when we do arrive on that great and awesome shore, all of these things will be made known to us. And we will then see the plan and the purpose of God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So leave the details to him and don't ever allow the enemy to destroy you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I didn't, he didn't promise us a rose garden. But you can pick up that rose and you can either smell it and say it's a beautiful rose or get, prick your finger with it and say, oh, I don't like this rose. The rose came with the prickles. And the thorns, thank you. Prickles, thorns, whatever. That's life. Someday you're you're smelling this beautiful rose and the next day you're saying, what happened? Come on now, help me. It's the truth. That's when you hold on to the nail-scarred hand. When you have nobody else to hold on to. He's there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So knowing who you are in Christ, in Numbers 13, 30, it says, we should go up. This is what Caleb said. We should go up and take possession, for we can certainly do it. The 12 spies Joshua sent into the promised land all saw the same thing. All saw the same thing. But... Some of them saw it different. Listen. The promised land, all, the promised land was what God said they were getting. He knew the giants that were there. He knew all the problems, but he'd already told them they were taking it. Ten came back saying, the people who live there are powerful and the cities are very large. We seem, now I want you to hear this. 
This is scripture. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Numbers 13, 28 through 33. That's a teaching in faith that we need to hear. Whatever you see yourself as, you will become. You are today what you thought and saw yourself as yesterday. And that's why the scripture's saying this. They, they said we're grasshoppers in our own eyes. In our own eyes, there's no way. There's no way out of this. How many times have we been like that in life, beloved? In our own eyes, we can't see the forest for the trees. In our own eyes, it's darkness instead of light. In our own eyes, it's hell instead of heaven. In our own eyes, we're grasshoppers. But in God's eyes, he had promised them they were taking the land. His promise was out there. Now watch this. Because of those words, they caused such panic that the people wanted to listen. These people were with Moses. They saw the Red Sea part. They saw the greatest miracles came, ever came from a human being. And listen to what happened with the power of words. They caused such panic that the people wanted to stone Moses pick a new leader, and go back into Egyptian bondage, into back, back into Egyptian slavery. That's what they wanted to do after hearing those words. That's incredible. But not Caleb. God's always had a people. He's always had one that will say, oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm not listening. no. No, no. That was Caleb. The Bible says he had a different spirit. We're talking about it's all in your attitude. That meant he had a different attitude. He had a different spirit and a different attitude. Numbers 14, 24 says, We should go up and take possession, for we can certainly do it. Years later, Beloved, years later, when Joshua was dividing the promised land amongst the tribes, Caleb stepped forward and said, Here I am today, listen, 85 years old. Whoa. Age, beloved, is a process. Becoming old is a state of mind. I thought I'd get more for the younger people in the church. <laughs> Seriously, it's the truth. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself vigorous and, you know, going to finish your course with joy? Or do you see the years that you've lived and think, oh, I'm, I'm washed up now. And well, not much left for me now. I refuse to live like that. And I'm not telling you I haven't had my moments. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. But I don't stay there. That's the difference. See, you don't feel because you came down. You feel because you stayed down. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. And as I've said, I said last week, you don't, we hear, well, so-and-so fell from grace. No, they didn't fall from grace. They fell into grace. Because God's grace never ending. It was that amazing grace on the cross that caused you and I to be born again and victorious in this life. Yes, we'll go through challenges. Yes, we'll go through heartache. Yes, we'll might be at the very edge of hell is how we feel. But either God's true or he's not. And I can tell you I've been to all three and I know that God's never left me. Because if he had left me, I wouldn't be standing up here today. I'd be, I'd be getting, uh, never mind. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give God a big, big praise. Come on. So here I am today, 85 years old. Listen to what he said. Just as vigorous as I was then, 
Now give me this hill country and the Lord prom- that the Lord promised me. And then Joshua blessed Caleb and gave him Hebron for his inheritance. Caleb, beloved, lived the winning life. Why? Because he had a good attitude. I'm not saying we're not going to have days that we have a rotten attitude. Come on. Am I the only one here? Tell the truth. Some days you want to kick the cat through this and through that and scream and everything else. It's not exactly the best attitude in the world, but I'm telling you, you can control it and don't tell me you can't. Because I'll tell you how I know this. You can be screaming and yelling at your spouse and they're screaming and yelling back at you and the doorbell rings and you open the door and it's, it's the pastor from the church. Hi, how are you? The attitude changed real fast. Don't tell me we can't put a smile on our face. I'm not saying we don't have our moments. We all do. You don't want to hear some of the prayers I pray. As I told you last week, the way I talked to God in some areas last week, I said if my children hadn't heard from me the next day, either by text, email, or whatever, I said, I was, I said Lord, don't let them see a pile of ashes under these sheets when they come. <laughs> because had I been living in the old covenant, I would have been dust. You're saying, what do you mean? God does it. I mean, we read the King James Bible, beloved, but it's not thee and thou and you. It's God help. That's sometimes the greatest prayer you can pray. God help. And then we all go into the whole thing. And instead of praying, we find ourselves complaining. And that's where I was. And I said, God, I quickly got back to where I should be. I'm making myself clear, honey. I'm opening up to you today because I'm real. You need to know you're not the only one that goes through these situations. But by the grace of God, you come through them. And you're not the only one to say, God, please forgive me. And the Bible says he's quick and just to forgive you and to to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Isn't that wonderful news? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So Caleb lived this life with God. One, he recalled the promises of God and acted on them. Two, he dared to take an unpopular stand. You're not always going to win friends. You're not always going to, you know, when you take a stand that's against the the multitudes, you're going to have some wind at your back. You're going to have people come against you. But I made a decision a long time ago. I'm serving God. I will receive wise counsel from wise people. And I have very wise people, my peers in my life, that I still take counsel from. And they're there for me. But when it comes right down to it, I'm serving God. Are you here today? So he refused or rather, he re- recalled the promises of God. He dared to take an unpopular stand. Three, he re- refused to quit when the pressure was on. Oh, it's great to love God and praise God and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. When the food's on the table, the bills are paid, all your family's healthy, the job's great, the, the, the work's great, everything's wonderful. You're in a wonderful neighborhood. Everything's hunky-dory in Disney World. Then all of a sudden, a rogue wave hits your life. Do we praise God then? Do we worship God then? Or are we just fair weather Christians? We just worship God when God's doing good things for us. But when the rogue wave hits, and I'm not insinuating it's God, You have to find these things out for yourself. But my Bible tells me God is a good God. He's a good God. So we need to know whether this situation is 
something we did or it's beyond our control. And at the bottom of the day, I told you last week about the, the languages of love, the five languages of love. And when I heard that one teacher teach this, I, I've been teaching the five languages years ago. I've got those things at home. But um, when I heard what he said, you know, I went through the languages and touching people, you know, giving them gifts, all these other things. But this preacher said, the language of God's love is trust. Amen. That went right into me, beloved. That went right into me. Trust him. Trust him through the mystery. Trust him. So he refused when the pressure was on. He refused to quit. For he saw possibilities where others only saw the problems. And five, he kept his mind young, even when his body was old. Does that describe you and I? Well, it should in Christ. Because the Bible says it's in him that you live and you move and you have your being. And the scripture tells us that inside of us, it's the mind of Christ in that spirit realm. In your spirit is the mind of Christ that will quicken everything else about you. See, your spirit was made new at the new birth. Your spirit is absolutely, it's sealed, sealed before God. And then everything else about you Spirit, soul, and body. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions, and you live in an encasement called a body, a flesh body. But the moment you were born again, that spirit was made alive. And the rest takes time. That's why it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that your emotions, your will, and all of these other things can line up with your spirit man. Your spirit is the real you. The real you. We take care of the flesh. We take care of the mind. We take care of the... We need to take care of the spirit. We need to know that's where the Holy Spirit dwells. Wow. And then when your mind and your will and your emotions are all lining up to the best of your ability with the word of God, your body follows suit. Hallelujah. So he said, or rather I'm saying, he kept his mind young when his body was old. The eyes of the Lord, the Bible says, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Whose heart is loyal to him. You'll find that in Second uh, Chronicles 16, 9. As you and I face another day, God wants to show you what he can do in you, for you, with you, and through you. I'm going to say that again. He wants to show you what he can do in you, for you, with you, and through you. The question is, will we let him? Will we let him walk out with us in our lives? Will we trust him as to what he's going to do for us? When Satan tries to remind you of your past, beloved, just take a few moments to remind him of his future. It's not good. It's all in our attitude, beloved. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Glory to God. I'm only going to go for a few more moments, but just um, thank you, Father. Yes, I'll do that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The biggest challenge we have, and I know I've been there many times, and I know many of you have too, is that we walk by faith and not by sight, but we can easily get very tired. Come on now. Raise your hand if I just said something that ministers to you, right, all over this church. You, 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 you're, you get tired. That's why the scripture tells us in Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in well-doing, for at the proper time 
We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. That's why I titled this message, It's All in Our Attitude. You see, you can start again at any given time. It's up to you. You can start all over again. Today can be the best day of your life for the rest of your life. You can say that. That's what Marilyn Hickey says every time you hear her. She'll say that. She always either begins or ends with, I think she ends the program with, let today be the best day of the rest of your life. It's our attitude. I want to tell you a true story as I'm closing here. Thomas Edison was a man, as you probably you know all about him, who, was, who absolutely refused to be defeated. One freezing December night in 1914, fire broke out in his factory. Within minutes, everything was destroyed. When he couldn't find his father, Edison's son got very concerned. Was he safe? With all his assets destroyed, would his spirit be broken? Suddenly, he saw his dad in the factory yard running towards him. Quick, get your mother, he shouted. Tell her to hurry up and bring all her friends because they're never going to see another fire like this one. <laughs> wow. That's a giant thinker. That's a giant slayer. That's what those ten, the, the two spies came back. They were giant slayers. Listen to this. Early the next morning, I wrote this in here and I need to say it. Edison never saw himself as a grasshopper. Thank you, Lord. That's not in the Bible. That's Pat McKinnon. Early the next morning, Edison called all his employees together and announced, we are going to rebuild. We'll make capital out of this disaster. We have just cleared out a bunch of old rubbish. Now we'll build bigger and better on the ruins. We can build better and bigger on the ruins of our lives. Yes, we can. We can learn things through the heartaches and the challenges that we would never learn any other way. Oh, hallelujah. I just got that a few moments ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can build bigger and better out of the ruins. And then he told one man to lease all the available machine shops in the area and another to find a wrecking crane. Now here's faith. Then, almost as an afterthought, he added, oh, by the way, does anybody here know where we can get some money? <laughs> this, is, this is true. This happened with Edison. Hallelujah. Do we know where we can get some money? Shortly after this, listen, he yawned, rolled up his coat to make him a pillow and fell fast asleep on a table. <laughs> in other words, he didn't have a care in the world. Everything he had was gone. But he's, he was still there and he still had faith. God says to you and I today, don't give up. With God's help, you can rebuild Whatever has happened to any of us, whatever happened yesterday, beloved, is in the past. God's grace and God's mercy are new every day. Lamentations 3.23. Say that with me, would you? God's grace, God's grace and God's mercy, and God's mercy is, new is new every day. And that is coming towards me. Yes. yes. Today he's saying to all of us, you can start all over again, and this time I will enable you to win. Just fear not. Keep your attitude right with God and let God take care of the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yep, the Lord said I'm done. Give him a big praise. God bless you. Thank you, Father. If we could bow our heads just in a few moments prayer this morning. 
I'd like to pray for you and others that have needs today. If you would just quietly pray with me. Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. I thank you for this great, awesome congregation. I thank you for the most wonderful people in this world that you've allowed me to lead to, minister to. Father, I give you the praise and I give you the glory for a great salvation, for the price that Jesus paid. And I thank you for everyone within the sound of my voice that you will give them this, this day and this coming up week peace that passes all understanding. You will say unto them, peace, be still, and know that I am God. I pray for every need, Lord, spirit, soul, and body. And I thank you, Father God, and I give you the praise. I give you the glory for your goodness towards the children of men. Bless each and every person. In Jesus' name I pray. Every person, Lord, in Jesus' name. And God's people said, if you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, you're a good person, you possibly have gone to church, and, but you've never made that final commitment to not only ask him to be your Savior, but to become your Lord. If there's anyone here that would say yes, the affirmative to any of those questions today, to be saved or to become your Lord, all I'm asking is that you raise your hand so we can pray. We'll pray as a congregation for you. Just raise your hand high and say, that's me, Pastor. Would you please pray for me? If there's anyone anywhere, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I see. I think, yes, I see that hand. God bless you. Put it back down again. God bless you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, put it back down. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Let's pray this together, beloved. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. We receive Jesus today as our Savior. And we ask you to forgive our sins. And this day, we make you our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people believe that said, Amen. Let's stand to our feet.